So we previously took a look at sequential operations in Prisma, and that's when we've got a bunch of different Prisma calls that we want to make one after the other. We want to make sure that all of them are going to succeed, and if something goes wrong somewhere in there, we should just cancel the whole thing. And so that's a case where everything that we're doing is a call to Prisma. So we might create a user and then create a post or something like that, and we might have a bunch of other Prisma calls. Everything in there, though, is a call to Prisma. There's another kind of transaction though that we might need to run sometimes, and that is when we have other work that we might need to do in the middle of some Prisma operations. So for example, we might want to create a user account in our database using Prisma, and then we might want to go get some information about that user or do some kind of asynchronous task that calls out to the network or something like that. Then once that's done, we might want to update that user record. So this is something that fits more inside what's called a long running transaction, or as Prisma calls it, an interactive transaction. Prisma has great support for interactive transactions at the most recent version, and we're going to take a look here at how to run them. I've got an example here where I'm creating a user account locally in our database, but we're also creating an account in Auth0, because in this example, Auth0 is going to be our authentication provider. So what we want to do here is we want to create a local user record in our local database, also create a user record in Auth0, and then store some information about that user. In this case, it's specifically the user ID from Auth0. We want to store that piece of information back in our database once that call completes. So this is the kind of thing that if something goes wrong, it's ripe for our database to get into a really invalid state. We might have a user record that's created locally, and then something fails over at Auth0, and then we're not able to complete the whole set of steps that we need to to properly furnish our user data. So it can be bad news. And this is a really good spot for an interactive transaction. Let's see how these calls work. So I've got this main function here. I've got just a test email. The first step is I'm creating a local user. So calling Prisma, creating a user with that email, giving my name there for the name field. The second step is we're going over to Auth0 and we're creating a user. I've got this create user function that I've defined up here, which uses the Auth0 management API. It comes in via no the node SDK, and we've got a call out to Auth0 for that. And we're just using a temporary password. It's just a random string generation. And we create our Auth0 user record. Once that's done, we come back to our database and we call our database to update it. And we want to take that local user ID that we created just in the step previous. We want to update it with some new data saying that we've got an auth provider ID that comes from Auth0. So we're kind of syncing up these two records. Now, whether or not in your own applications, you run two parallel user tables, one locally and one in Auth0, totally up to the needs of your application. I've seen it done both ways myself, and I've, uh, I've actually implemented it both ways in different apps, depending on the need. So there's our setup. Let's run this and see what we get. So over here in the terminal, we can do npm run dev. Once we do, we should see nothing. So that tells me that everything should have worked out okay. Let's come over here. We'll refresh our local table. So I've got ID 7, I've got my email. Over here, I've got an auth provider ID, which tells me that over in auth0, if we refresh, we should have something good. Let's see. There we go. So we've got our single user in Auth0, we've got our single user over here in our local table, everything looks good. However, now let's get ourselves into a failure state. So for example, what if we tried to run this operation again, not change anything, not supply a new email, anything like that, let's just try to run it again. So I'm going to npm run dev again. This time we get this big error output and the important part here is the user already exists. That's what we get in our output here. So let's see what we've got over in our database. If we refresh our database here, we have got a, another user record. We've got no auth provider ID over here in Auth0. We do not have a new record and we've effectively got an invalid state between our two databases. So this is, of course, bad news. We don't want this. We want to protect against this. Now, there is an argument to be made that if we had some better protections in our schema, so if we go to schema here, and we maybe had something like, let's say our email here had to be unique, it would fail at that first step anyway. We wouldn't have a duplication going into our local database. Everything could be fine. So that might be true, but we do want to make sure that we protect against this kind of thing just in case we have something in our schema that gets us into an invalid state. So what we can use here is an interactive transaction. We can keep all of the same work, but instead of just doing one thing after the other, what we can do is we can say await prisma dot dollar transaction. And then we effectively want to give ourselves a callback here. 
what we're going to do is put this thing inside this parameter called tx. And what that's doing for us is, is it's giving us another instance of Prisma client. And we'll see how that works in just a second. We're going to copy all of this stuff. We'll just cut it out of there, put it into that callback. And then what we can do is update anywhere where we call Prisma inside here, we can update it with TX. So that inner instance of the Prisma client. All right, so things are looking good there. I'm going to come over here. We're going to just get rid of that second record. And let's try this again. So we've got everything set up in our transaction. Let's try to run that again. When we do, we still get that failure case here. We've got the user already exists. But if we're over here now, our database locally is not going to have that new record. So effectively, we were waiting until everything here was possible to complete within this transaction. And if it wasn't, we just wanted to fail with, uh, with nothing happening. And that's exactly what we would expect for a, a, a well-formed transaction against our database. We should note here that TX, this is an instance of Prisma client that is specific to this transaction. It's scoped to this transaction. So what we could do is we could leave Prisma, so the call to the original Prisma client instance that we have up here, we could leave that in place. But what would happen is when we go to run again, so let's make sure that's saved. If we go to run again, we're going to get the same behavior. We fail because the user exists in zero and we have another user record. The reason is that over here, we are not using the Prisma client instance that is scoped to, to this transaction. It doesn't know about the, the context here of this transaction. So we definitely want to be sure that whenever we are inside an interactive transaction like this, we want to make sure that we use TX or whatever we name this parameter here. And that will ensure that everything in here is going to succeed. And if something along the way fails, the whole thing just gets canceled. So now we've got a really good idea of how to do sequential operations in Prisma and also a good idea of how to do interactive transactions. And these two techniques together can help to give us a lot of protection in our database, making sure that we don't get into invalid data states. Be sure to check out the full course at howtoprisma.com if you want to go even deeper on transactions in Prisma. Thanks for watching.